Hi, my name is Shannon Spinake. I'm going to skip this slide because you know who I am, but I just want to uh, give a big thank you to Jay Nath, who is here in the audience today and said that he was going to heckle me. So if he does that, who's ever sitting next to him, do what you need to do. <laughs> uh, so pop quiz, who designed this spacesuit? Uh, just to show of hands, was it Boeing? No one for Boeing? Northrop Grumman? These are all defense companies. Spa War? Couple. Playtex? A lot of people know that. Right, so you're right, it is. It's Playtex. And I started with this slide to show that innovation can come from places that you least expect. And this is one of the inspirations for a project that the city of San Francisco does called Improve SF. Improve SF is a platform powered by MindMixer, who is a Code for America accelerator company, and we use them uh, as our citizen engagement platform. And if we have uh, one metric that matters, Alistair's here, it would be to, it's centered around this idea of building community around civic problem solving, and we measure this by number of ideas submitted and interactions with those ideas. Yes, finding solutions is important to us, but first and foremost, it's really about a community centered around civic problem solving. Um, so I'm gonna skip through a lot of these slides um, because I have a short amount of time, but we've launched challenges like help the MTA design their logo. We've gotten great submissions from people that you would least expect. Um, we've asked uh, how to solve the fresh food dilemma. Uh, how do we improve access to healthy and fresh food in the tenderloin? We've, we've, uh, the MTA, or sorry, the San Francisco Public Library has asked for help designing their new library card. And we have asked what would inspire you to share your home energy data. And our recent challenge, our most recent challenge that closed, uh, it's called Rags to Revenue, and we're asking how to create local jobs and startups using, uh, using textiles from Goodwill. So this is the slide that I really want to talk about, which is the numbers. So MindMixer gives us really good data on how people are interacting with these challenges. So we've really learned three things from this data, three big takeaways. The first is that it's really important to work within an existing community. And you can see, you can see from this chart where we didn't do that. So the energy data challenge, we didn't work with an existing community and we had really low levels of participation. I would hashtag this one fail. Um, the second learning is in addition to online communities, we need to work with existing communities that are also offline. And the first three challenges show that. So what the data says is this first challenge, the MTA logo, we work mostly with a design community, and that community is mostly online. The second challenge, this was a neighborhood, and a lot of the submissions were actually from neighborhood residents themselves. And we did a lot, about, we did a lot with going into the community, we went to public hearings, we held panels, we held hackathons in the neighborhood. But then this third challenge, where we had the most ideas submitted of any challenge that we've launched, um, we actually put paper forms in the public libraries and in schools so that it lowered the barrier to entry to participate so that you could just quickly draw your design on a paper form. And then Captricity, who's another Code for America accelerator company, helped us to digitize those forms and get, the, get them on our platform. Uh, so that's really interesting to point out is we actually had less views on that challenge than we did ideas submitted, and that's because of those paper forms. Which brings me to the third learning, which is that number of views don't necessarily translate to ideas submitted. And you can see that in the last challenge, our rags to revenue challenge. We partnered with a media company called Good, um, and they have a deep reach into the design community and civic problem-solving communities. And um, they did a really good job getting our challenge out there, but we didn't get as many submissions as we had on the logo challenge, or especially on the, the, the food dilemma challenge. So these were just some of our learnings um, and how we're using data to iterate and experiment how we, how we design these challenges. So based on this, our next challenge will be one that partners again with uh, some sort of media organization that has deep reach into a community. And we're going to look at online and offline communities, have more offline events, look to lower the barrier to entry with things like paper forms. And uh, yeah, check out improvesf.com. Thank you.